Welcome to Flowscape, my friend. I'm here to help you get started on your first adventure. If you want to look around, just hold the right mouse button down. To move around, you can press WASD to go forward, backwards, left, and right. If you want to go up and down, try QNE. Sometimes you want to go faster, and you can do that by holding the Tab key. You can also spin around an object by holding down the Alt key and the right mouse button. Panning is pretty easy, too, with the middle mouse button. All right, now that we can get around, let's paint some flowers. Over on the right menu is a pretty yellow one. Click on that and choose your favorite flower. Now all you have to do is left drag with your mouse to see them grow. Try scrolling your mouse wheel to change the size of the brush. The big long toolbar at the top has some fancy sliders. Let's have a look at what they do. The first one is the flow. This controls how much pours from your brush so you can paint a little or paint a lot. The next one is the grow speed and lets you adjust how fast your pretty flowers will grow. Give it a try. You can even undo a mistake with Control Z and redo with Control Y. The third slider is your size and pretty useful for controlling how big your things will grow. A nifty feature for making a larger landscape is to paint very small. It's all a matter of perspective. Then we have the size variation slider. This lets you choose how much variation there is between them. Sometimes you want to give each tree a little random angle, so you can move the lean slider over a bit to get that effect. Now that we have covered the sliders, let's see what the toggle buttons do. The first one lets you toggle between aligning to the landscape and growing straight up. Trees, for example, like to grow straight up, while bushes and grass might like to follow the landscape. Now we have a fun button where we can decide to drop certain objects like stones, logs, twigs, and leaves using the built in physics system. Toggling that button will let you place them normally on the landscape. Next, we have procedural generation, which can be useful for placing things randomly around your landscape. Try it now by pressing Go and selecting various objects to place. All those sliders can be used interactively while it's doing its thing. Sometimes you may want a bit more control on where you paint. That is where the three layer buttons come in handy. If you turn off water, you can no longer paint in the water areas. Very useful when painting plants. I'm going to paint some rocks right here, and by turning off the rock layer, my grass won't grow on the rocks. Let's turn off the land layer and turn back on the rock layer. Watch how I can paint mushrooms only on the rocks. Let's make a nice home. Choose a house from the menu and notice the blue cursor is no longer there. Instead, we have a house you can place one at a time. Scrolling the mouse wheel will now cycle between all the different types. Let's make them smaller by holding the Alt key and using the mouse wheel. If you hold Shift, you can now rotate with your mouse wheel. That toggle button up top becomes useful now as you can choose between how many degrees it rotates. Sometimes it's useful to place one thing on top of another, and that is where the control key is very useful. Now that we have placed a few nice houses, we might need to move them around a bit. 
click on the Transform tool at the very top right. You now have Move, Rotate, and Scale. A really handy tip is to use 1, 2, and 3 to switch between them. Sometimes you might want to move a few things at once, and you can do that by holding the Shift key to select more than one and Alt to remove. By pressing X, you can toggle between rotating and scaling individual houses or as a group. Sometimes we have happy accidents and that's okay. We can point at something and press the Delete key. When you hold that Delete key down, it will clean up anything you point at. If you are in a real hurry, you can try the Eraser tool. Or if you just want to get rid of a certain thing, just right-click on its icon. Let's make a nice landscape with the Sculpting tool. Simply hold the left mouse button to raise the terrain. By holding Shift, you can lower it. Your mouse wheel controls the size, and holding control and your mouse wheel adjusts the strength. If you just hold control, you can smooth out any bumps. Sometimes you might just want to go for a wander around your scene. By toggling the first person button or pressing F, you can do just that. When you have placed that perfect camera angle, press Page Up to save it. Now you can press Page Down to bring you right back. If you want to admire your creation, you can hide the UI by pressing Space. If life is going too fast for you, hold the right control button down to slow it down. And using the mouse wheel, will change the speed. When you have placed that perfect mountain, you don't want to accidentally delete it. Press L to lock or unlock objects. That way they will be safe from happy accidents. Rotating the sun very slowly is easy with two, four, six, and eight, on your number pad. If you like to play Dungeons and Dragons, boy, do we have a neat tool for you. Click on Map and switch to Ortho for a top down view. Here you can select different grids for your play style and take screenshots to print out or play in your favorite virtual tabletop. Here you can change what materials are on your land. Turn the water on and make it go to the horizon. Let's have some ice or even lava. Make your land bigger and change the snow. You can import OBJ files here to bring in your own 3D models. Make sure that all your files are in the same folder and everything is named correctly in the material file. Sometimes we might want to pan the camera and capture a sequence of high resolution images. Move your camera and press Start, move it again, and press End. Test it out by pressing Play and adjust your speed. When you are ready, go to your settings and turn your screenshot resolution higher to create high-quality image sequences for your editing app.